Thank you, Joe. Well, just as George Washington Carver was a visionary in terms of bio-based products and the Kimergy movement, Jeff Boyne has been a visionary in terms of biofuels. He was a very early mover in the biofuel sector and has been at the forefront of biofuels innovation for the past 30 years. He was only 22 years old when he moved to Scotland, South Dakota to manage his family's first ethanol plant in 1987. Today, due to Jeff's leadership and vision, Poet has come a long way from that one million gallon facility. It is now a network of 28 biorefineries in seven states with more than 1,800 team members. Jeff always saw past the individual plant. He was one of the earliest advocates on behalf of the bio-based economy and the role of biorefineries, a vision that bio shares with Jeff. In 2014, Jeff took Poet beyond ethanol and created a joint venture with the Dutch life science and bioscience company DSM, which is also a bio member, to produce commercial scale cellulosic ethanol. They were one of the first companies to do so. As Jeff once said, dozens of companies can make cellulosic ethanol in the lab. Making it commercially inviable is the real challenge. And that is why Poet has made research a central part of doing business. Jeff's professional accomplishments are an American success story, but he is most proud of his contribution to the agriculture segment of the United States and abroad. Poet's biorefineries have created a market for agriculture products which have helped rejuvenate rural America. Poet joined Bio, our organization, in 2007 and has been an enthusiastic member ever since. Poet is also le a leading member of the Bio, Industrial, and Environmental Section Governing Board since 2011. It is my honor to present Jeff Broin with the George Washington Carver Award for Innovation in Industrial Bi Biotechnology. Jeff? Thank you, Brent, and good afternoon, everyone. It's a true honor to accept this award from the Biotechnology and Innovation Organization. I am humbled and filled with deep gratitude of being chosen for the George Washington Carver Award. 30 years ago, I never would have expected one small South Dakota biofuel plant to grow from a one million gallon per year facility to a six and a half billion dollar revenue company and the largest producer of biofuels in the world. When I was a teenager in Minnesota during the early 1980s, the United States was in the middle of an ag crisis, very similar to the situation we're entering in worldwide agriculture today. At that time, corn prices were 30% below the cost of production. Farmers were being paid by the government to set aside 20% of their land and store their surplus grain for years at a time. Farm income and land values plummeted worldwide. Farmers filed bankruptcy and walked away from productive farmland around the globe. The result was a major recession that affected almost everyone on the planet. As a result, biofuels were born. And I made the most important decision of my lifetime. When I was 22 years old, we bought a bankrupt ethanol plant in South Dakota. I decided to take a risk and become general manager, so I packed my bags and moved to a place I had never been. I lived in the plant for the first six months and worked seven days a week to rebuild and later manage that plant. When something broke down, it had to get repaired quickly. When a new part was needed or equipment maintenance was required, I would drive long hours over hundreds of miles to ensure we got what we needed affordably and efficiently. And eventually, that company grew. New divisions were born in design and construction, marketing, management, and research and development. We built dozens of plants throughout the Midwest, managing them to quick profitability and advancing the technology rapidly. 
A lot of things have changed since those early days, but the core values we learned remain the same. The strong work ethic, innovative spirit, and sheer determination to make a difference are what continue to drive POET and the industry today. I've been fortunate to see firsthand how much this industry has progressed and grown over the past three decades. The development of billions of dollars of biofuels and co-products like protein and corn oil have had a dramatic impact on the U.S. and worldwide economy. The biofuels industry has created 400,000 new jobs across the United States and has contributed more than $44 billion to the national GDP, along with lowering worldwide gas prices, significantly improving air quality in our large cities, and producing a new high-quality, low-cost source of protein that is marketed globally. Perhaps most importantly, biofuels have created a market for agricultural commodities that is critically important to North America and the world. Let's talk about an interesting fact. 70 to 85 percent of the people in most developing nations are farmers. Let me say that again so we all get it. 70 to 85 percent of the people in developing nations are farmers. Many people are fooled into thinking that cheap grain feeds these nations. Nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, with ever-increasing yields and often oversupplied commodities, which we see today in the world, when rich nations subsidize their grain and flood the markets of these developing countries at prices below their cost of production, we bankrupt their farmers and starve their people. We ruin the rag sector because they can't compete with our subsidized prices. I'm speaking about the U.S. and Europe here. I know this firsthand. I've spent a lot of time in Africa talking to these farmers. I've talked to them. I've heard the stories. This is the problem. You need only look at the GDP of these nations, which rises and falls with grain prices. It's as simple as this. Increasing biofuels in our fuel supply will be critical as yields continue to increase to stabilize commodity supplies and prices. This will allow farmers in developing nations to actually turn a profit feed their families, and contribute to their nation's economies. This is the Biotechnology Innovation Organization. The people in this room are working to change the paradigm. I challenge you to change your thinking process. Don't fall for the lies of the hydrocarbon-based companies that want you to believe there's a shortage of productive ag land to produce food, fuel, and fiber. On the contrary, I've studied the data, and the world is awash in excess starch and cellulose that is here for all of us to convert to sustainable biofuels and bioproducts. I've got an interesting question for all of you, switching gears a bit. Is there a low-cost way to store solar energy that doesn't damage the environment? Is there a low-cost way to store solar energy that doesn't damage the environment? Well, I guess we could uh, you know, store it in li liquids or solids, but only in small quantities and not for very long. We can store solar energy in batteries, but we're finding that it's very harmful to the environment to produce those batteries and dispose of them later. So what can we do? God gave us the perfect way to store solar energy, but we don't seem to recognize it. We can infinitely store solar energy in grains and biomass. All we have to do is keep it dry. I've witnessed it on that farm I grew up on, storing corn for five years. When we took it out of those bins, it looked exactly the way it did when it went in five years earlier. And that's energy and it's bioproducts. In Emmitsburg, Iowa, Poet DSM is learning to convert biomass into biofuels and co-products. It's the first commercial plant to do this successfully in the United States. The process takes uh, sustainably takes waste products such as leaves, cobs, and husks and turns them into renewable biofuels. The cellulosic process, when added on to existing poet starch-based facilities, makes our plants true sustainable biorefineries. We produce not only biofuels whose emissions are in sync with nature from two different raw materials, but also an ever-growing range of co-products including corn oil, 
distillers grains, liquefied carbon dioxide, fiber, renewable power, and a few things I can't mention yet. At POET, we intend to deliver this technology across the globe. Successes in biotechnology to date prove that our world can meet many of its needs in the coming decades through agriculture rather than fossil-based products. Make no mistake, biorefining and biotechnology are the future. Look no further than the biorefineries that already are converting starch and in at least one case cellulose into biofuels and numerous additional co-products. Researchers at POET and other companies are launching newly developed bioproducts that are becoming components in new indus industries that were never before considered. It won't be long before biorefineries and biotechnology will dominate in the areas of food, fuel, and fiber. I believe over the next 30 years, more and more biorefineries will dot the landscape of the United States, the Americas, and eventually the world, and it will become obvious that sustainable ag-based products from the surface of the earth will replace most fossil-based products before the end of the century. I'd like to thank the numerous people who have supported and passionately helped drive POET's mission throughout the years. Without the tens of thousands of dedicated team members and supporters from the beginning to today, I wouldn't be standing here. I'd also like to thank my wife of 27 years, Tammy, who's with us today, and our three children for your unwavering love and support through it all, and to God who guides me through all of life's challenges and accomplishments. I'd especially like to thank those who nominated me, Iowa Bio for supporting this award, and Bio itself for presenting me with the George Washington Carver Award. I'm incredibly humbled by your recognition and motivi motivated by your passion for biotechnology. George Washington Carver was a man who understood the necessity of agriculture in our world. He was a true champion for farmers, protecting our environment and advancing research in sustainable ag products. He embodied the spirit of everyone in this room. We can only hope to follow his example in making the world a better place using the sun, the soil, and the seed to revolutionize the world. Thank you.